Welcome to the Orlando Holiday Guide podcast show presented by Hugh Hattrick in association with its Orlando Time Facebook page. Trusted, acknowledged and respected. Good morning and welcome to Hattrick's Orlando Holiday podcast show with me, Hugh Hattrick. I hope you're very well and a special welcome to all our listeners from the It's Orlando Time Facebook page as we're doing it in association with you all. So Orlando is, as you know, pretty much on lockdown as is much of the Western world. In fact, much of the globe seems to be in the same position. And it got me thinking as to rather than kind of get involved in all the kind of negative news and wondering when things are going to reopen, as to why don't we remember some of our most uh, enjoyable moments of Orlando, or funniest times as well. Now, my new website is fully up and running. So if you go on to www.hughattrick.com and you can buy a copy of my Orlando Holiday Guide, I've still got a few available of the first edition, but there'll be some new updates as well coming on later in the year. And hopefully we'll be doing another hard copy and we'll, we'll be updated as well on Kindle. And of course, this is £5.50, including free delivery from anywhere in the UK and also in Europe and abroad. So that's hughattrick.com to get your copy of the My Orlando Holiday Guide. Now, going to the first thing that you that happens when you arrive in Orlando, whether it be at Orlando International Airport or Sanford, is once you've done your passport control and you've got your luggage and you've probably rented a car. And I thought I would start with the first time I went to Orlando with my family. Now, on the flight, we had the option to have fish, which is not always, I have to say, it's quite a rare option on a long haul flight. And I'm always a little bit wary of uh, eating fish and things on long haul flights or even really any kind of flights. I always think it might be better with other types of food uh, just to be on the safe side. So I think I had chicken and my wife had had fish. And as we were coming into land, she'd been absolutely fine. And she started to feel a little bit off, just a bit kind of sicky um, as we came down to land. And once we landed, um, she was, in fact, physically uh, sick. But she was fine. She had kind of cleared pretty much, you know, quickly. And, and, and it was all quite straightforward. But because she, was, she had been unwell, the stewards and the, the pilots and so on said it would be best for her to wait till everyone else was off the flight and they would take her on a wheelchair um, through passport control and things like that. Now, as it was our first time that we had flown, we'd taken far too much stuff. I mean, we literally didn't have enough hands to carry all the luggage. Bearing in mind, we had a one and a half year old and a three and a half year old, ch uh, ch um, two children at the time. So all the stuff that you need for them as well and a double buggy. So somehow we managed to get off the plane after everybody had gone. So of course that takes about half an hour. And eventually we got to passport control and everyone was still looking pretty, pretty ropey at that point. And we had to get the staff, that's in the stewards and the pilot, to take my children along with carrying some of their bags because there simply wasn't enough uh, people to carry everything. So once we got through all of that, we eventually made it to the car rental uh, desk. Now, I had been booked with, it was actually budget, um, but they have lots of different affiliates as well. There's like, you know, there's Hertz, there's Alamo, all these different ones. And unfortunately, on the, the letter I'd gotten, um, it had said that you were either with budget or with its other affiliate. And of course, I'd gone to the other branch and then waited in a queue for 10 minutes and only to be told, actually, no, you need to go to the budget desk. So off I went to the budget desk and there was a, another queue of nearly 45 minutes. And of course, it's really warm and muggy in Orlando International Airport. It certainly was in 2015. And we were all knackered. We had been traveling for hours and hours and hours. Um, and we all were feeling a bit worse for wear in terms of we were just a bit fed up. And when I finally got to the front of the queue and the chap took me forward to say, yep, next, please. And I filled in the details, got the rental car all sorted out. Um, he happened to see my wife and children. Now, he didn't know that they were associated with me. And he happened to say under his breath, my goodness, look at those lot over there. They look absolutely awful and their kids are causing absolute chaos. And I just said to him, that's my wife and they're my children. And he was, of course, mortified at doing so, <laughs> but uh, as I had caught him. But uh, they, I mean, to be fair, my kids were only making a tiny wee bit of noise. And my wife did look like something out of the zombie apocalypse at that point. But other than that, she was absolutely fine. But the thing was, he did say, you can have an upgrade. 
So he upgraded us to a big Chrysler, full-size Chrysler Voyager, which was rather good. And after about half an hour of trying to find it, as we go through how many different terminal buildings, you have to go outside, up a, up a, a set of escalators, a long, a long, long garage, through other corridors, and eventually we got to the budget rental car and we got our car. And then we had to actually put in the car seats because they didn't know how to do it, or they weren't going to do it themselves. Um, or the, the staff, when they helped you, they just simply gave you the seats and said, there it is. So eventually we got it sorted, but we must have been in that airport for about two and a half hours. Um, but you know, after we landed, it just seemed to take forever and ever. So word of warning that if you're going for the first time and you have young children, please make sure that you allow for time for all the kind of movement. Try to slim down as much luggage as you can so that you don't, you're not carrying stuff that you don't need. Um, and you will certainly benefit from that. And you need a very good pair of shoes in terms of trainer, something light that's really comfortable because you're going to be on your feet all the time. Well, I never thought I'd ever be mentioning the word zombie when it came to Orlando holidays. But there you have it. I've managed it. Now, there's wisdom in the story. So first of all, what can we take from that little clip? Make sure you eat something sensible. Don't eat food that you wouldn't normally eat at home. Secondly, make sure you drink enough fluids, plenty of water and cold drinks and um, that will keep you well hydrated so that when you get into the kind of warm and humid um, areas of the airport and also when you get into Florida, Florida in general, which is pretty hot and humid most of the year round, you'll be able to cope. And thirdly, limit your luggage as much as possible, especially when you have little ones. We made the mistake really of taking our car seats with us because we thought it might, you know, make, save us 100, 150 pounds at the time. But actually the hassle of having to carry the extra car seats, I would say I wouldn't do it again. Even if I had to, um, if I had little ones at that age, I would still be just, just hiring it um, at the time from the car rental and just pay the extra because it's honestly that trying to carry all these things is absolutely crazy. So let's go on to our next topic. There are lots of places where you can get bargains in Orlando, but many people take an extra case with them just so that they can bring back lots of nice gifts and shopping from all their experiences at things like the outlet, uh, outlet malls and all the big shopping centres that are in Orlando. But there are some really good shops that you might not have come across. Now, in Britain, of course, we have things like the pound shop and things like that and the kind of bargain shops. But in America, they have things like one, two, three dollar, the Dollar Tree, things like that. And actually, they're normally at every kind of major shopping mall or kind of shopping area that you find in Orlando, especially off the 192 at Kissimmee. And in and most of the places that have reasonable shops, you'll find probably find a Dollar Tree as well. And they're really good for getting, uh, you know, kind of uh, light drinks, you know, kind of soft drinks, snacks, crisps. And um, they'll even do kind of like microwavable meals to some extent. Very good for kind of little gifts like you can get cards, birthday cards, um, all the kind of greetings cards, things like that. Then usually they'll have a selection of them. And there's all sorts of interesting stuff, especially if you're going to go to the beach. You can get your um, things like your not quite tennis rackets, but, you know, like kind of um, cheap toys for the beach, basically, like your, your bu uh, bucket and spade and all sorts of stuff that you might want. Um, tennis balls and all that kind of stuff that the kids will want to play with. And they do have the odd uh, selection of toys as well. So even some gardening gear if you need things like that. But they're very good for gloves, like disposable gloves, um, basic medicines as well, basic pharmaceuticals. They've got, you know, some of the stuff in there and you could end up saving quite a bit of money uh, between that and a normal pharmacy for exactly the same product. And it's quite good as well for kind of experiencing what real life America is all about. Um, it's not just the high end shopping, but there's, you know, the, your, this, this is where you'll find anybody from every kind of walk, uh, walk of life and background goes into a Dollar Tree. You'll be surprised. We've seen some amazing cars sitting outside of a Dollar Tree before. And when you go in, you'll be surprised who you see there. Now, if you'd like to get in contact with us regarding the show or something you would like to see on the show, or if you have any funny stories as well that you would like us to tell um, on the podcast, you can give us an email. It's info at shoehattrick.com. And if you've got any queries regarding uh, Orlando, uh, perhaps a specific question about how to, you know, an, an area or a topic of traveling to Orlando or having a holiday in Orlando that you would like to be answered, we'll do our very best to give you the, the answer and to do that as quickly as we can. All you need to do is just send us an email at info at hughhattrick.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Well, that just about rounds it up for this week on Hattrick's Orlando Holiday Guide. 
But I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you're taking care, staying at home, staying safe, using all the phrases that are out there. But remember to um, this will eventually pass and hopefully in a few months time we'll all be rebooking our holidays and getting ready to celebrate in celebration. Pardon the pun. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.